Wireless exposures in schools is something I've been working on as well. I'm gonna fly a little bit through it, but um, I think it's one of the most important issues related to wireless technology. In 2011, the uh, Council of Europe issued a Resolution 1815 where they said give preference to wired internet connections and strictly regulate the use of mobile phones by school children. Except what I'm seeing in schools is one-on-one -on -one devices, uh, wireless access points in all the rooms, sometimes two or three, and uh, plus cell phones being used as part of the curriculum. Um, this is an ad on, it was on Facebook, the Verizon Foundation saying, putting forward how important tablets are in the classroom. Your devices are made for amazing. Look at how close those devices are to the bodies. Um, and this is scientific imaging, again, by Claudio Fernandez and engineers uh, in the Federal Universities of Brazil, looking at the penetration into, these are actually looking with two different focuses of the penetration of the radiation from a tablet into uh, the brain tissue of a six-year-old child, with yellow being the highest. And this would be the device here, which is where young children hold the devices. Now, I just wanted to point this out that in, in Los Angeles, several years ago, when 1.3 million was spent on iPads, special education teachers started a Facebook group, Repairs Not iPads, which raises the important question of why are we why are we not fixing the infrastructure, class size, all of these issues which are so important in schools before we're just dumping in all these devices which are breaking, kids are on porn. I can't tell you how many parents call me and say, well, my big problem, I heard you work on iPads in the classes and my kids are, you do not know what they are looking at in the classrooms and or when they're out in the schoolyard. Like, can you help us with that? I mean, in recess, um, so there's so many issues related to schools. The United Educators of San Francisco and many other unions have been addressing this. They just passed a resolution. We did a webinar. I did it with uh, Physicians for Safe Technology, uh, Dr. Cindy Russell, on cell phone and wireless radiation in schools and what teachers can do and what policymakers can do. You can go online to watch that. Uh, the Collaborative for High Performance Schools has criteria for a low EMF classroom. There are solutions. The New Jersey Educational Association has recommendations to reduce exposure and minimize uh, risks from electronic devices. There are bans and restrictions on Wi-Fi in school worldwide. In the middle, you'll see um, St. Augustine School in Italy where they're removing the Wi-Fi router. Um, and now I'm gonna move on to international action on cell phones and wireless and all over. So this just happened a few days ago. Court ordered the Italian government to publicize cell phone risks. Now already in Italy, there are two court cases that have concluded that cell phone radiation caused tumors and uh, people have gotten money for their cell phone related tumors. So now I can add Italy to this list of governments who advise and have information about how to reduce exposure to cell phone radiation. Now all the countries on this list are not the same in how they've approached this, but all of them say something to the degree of, well, you should reduce exposure to children or you should reduce exposure. They don't say what the US government says, which is if you are worried, and if you are worried, here's what you can do, and they give three little ideas, which is just not good enough. Um, France is a great model. They have websites, uh, web pages on how to reduce exposure to computers, to, um, to cell phones in, in detail. And we have all of this on, online. This is from French Polynesia, part of their 30-second video where they show what things emit radiation in your home. And there are regulations on people being informed about cell phone radiation when you go to buy a phone in France, India, Belgium, Israel, um, French Polynesia, and Berkeley, California, which I'm gonna talk about, which passed a law that 
that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Belgium has banned the sale of mobile phones designed for young children. They've also banned Wi-Fi in nursery school uh, in Ghent, Belgium. In 2010 and amended in 2011, I think I talked about how in San Francisco they passed uh, an ordinance that retailers must display posters and stickers informing people that cell phones emit radiation and they had posters, uh, and I'll read what one of them says, limit cell phone use by children. Well, what happened was the CTIA immediately hit them with a lawsuit. And after a series of, of legal challenges, San Francisco wasn't able to enforce the law they had passed. Um, and here we are with ads about loving your phone. And here's a child hugging Alexa. That's, this is a, there's a video online, it's singing Twinkle Twinkle to her. It's on. And there's a fine print warning for, um, for these virtual assistants that the device should be installed and operated with a minimum distance of 20 centimeters between the radiator and your body. But parents don't know that and certainly toddlers don't know that. So Berkeley, California wanted to inform people about the fine print warnings and pass this ordinance that says, if you carry or use your phone in a pants or shirt pocket or tucked into a bra when the phone is on and connected to a wireless network, you may exceed the federal guidelines for exposure to radio frequency radiation. This potential is greater for children. Now, that was removed because when the CTIA, the wireless industry, sued Berkeley immediately after passing this, in the court deliberations, they, that got nixed. Um, Harvard lawyer Lawrence Lessig is defending this ordinance pro bono. You can watch uh, court proceedings online at Environmental Health Trust YouTube page, which are fascinating because the CTIA is arguing that this is violating the retailer's free speech rights. Um, and we're sort of in the middle of this because it went to the Supreme Court, which then sent it back for the appeals court to look at uh, in light of some other cases. We have the largest database on worldwide actions at Environmental Health Trust. You can click on different countries and learn about what's happening worldwide. And in the middle of all that, we're being, I just, these advertisements, they, um, I just think they're so powerful to put them in here because this is what we are being sold. Binge on the beach, on a beautiful beach. Why would we want to look at our phones? Policy changes are needed. If you want to ask, how do I do for exposure? The first thing I'll say is we need policy change because with 5G, it's involuntary exposure. You can take your cell phone and you can keep it away from your body. You can hardwire your, your laptop at home, but you can't stop the radiation from cell towers permeating you know, your body when you're outside wanting to enjoy your yard. Or so this... Um, this is front and center is policy change. I am going to talk about things that people can do, but I would ask everyone, people, maybe you haven't gotten involved in politics or spoken at meetings. I know I had never spoken at a council meeting before. I did not know who my elected council people even were before I learned about this issue several, several years ago. It's been a long time. I thought that I would... I have to say, I thought this would be easily fixed about a decade now when I first learned about this. And uh, I got more and more involved the more I realized how important it is that we change this for our children, especially our teenagers, um, babies that have yet to be born. So Environmental Health Trust, ehtrust.org, Americans for Responsible Technology, Physicians for Safe Technology, find or start a lo local group. Those are great resources. I'm um, also a scientist for wired technology. The BabySafe project, I'm sure many people are aware of. Um, 
the grassroots environmental education as well as uh, environmental health trust launch this campaign that's been signed on by over 200 doctors to reduce exposure to pregnant women. And if you go online, because you got a lot of homework to do, uh, and watch the press conference, you'll see Dr. Hugh Taylor, who's chief of obstetrics at Yale, talk about his research with mice exposed to cell phone radiation and how the offspring of the pregnant mice had poor memory and uh, they were hyperactive. If mice could have ADHD, that's what they would have. Um, and uh, I think that you know our our um, our children and uh, the fetus are the most vulnerable, and they need to be protected. So um, please go online. They have a lot of resources. I also have in the back a lot of handouts. I hope you'll take some, take some with you. They're downloadable off our website, Baby Safe Project. If you contact them, you want to share this information with your community, they will send you brochures to share as well. And this is a, um, oh, the sound doesn't work. Is it not working? Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. There we have a short PSA about how to reduce exposure based on the American Academy of Pediatrics recommendations. And we have these uh, postcards, flyers. Again, they're all on the back on the back table, as well as the table here. Plus, we have a newsletter. It goes out once a month. It has the latest news on electromagnetic fields. And that way, you can stay up to date. And it's a really useful resource to share with other people as well. That's at ehtrust.org.